Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to After Prison Show. And today I wanna to share with you a crazy story that I just recently ran across in the news. It is a prison related news story. It's kind of almost the same as a story that we just recently shared about a date that ended up leading to a person going to prison and a bank robbery taking place in that day. The premise of this story that I wanna share with you guys is, you know, love will make a person do some crazy things even when one party in the relationship is locked up in prison. And another thing that comes to mind with a story like what we're getting ready to share is, you know, sometimes you run across stories where somebody gets locked up or caught for doing something for somebody who is locked up. And you gotta wonder to yourself when you see some of these headlines, like somebody getting caught trying to bring in some contraband, throwing a Nerf football full of the contraband, over a prison fence, shooting a potato gun over the prison fence, dropping a drone into a prison with the contraband. You gotta wonder when you run across some of these stories like, damn, why would somebody do that? Take a risk that could lead to them getting in trouble because somebody that they know or somebody that they love is locked up and in trouble themselves. Why would somebody do that? And the only thing that I can think in relation to all of that is, Love will certainly make a person do some crazy things and some things that they might not otherwise have done or even thought about doing before. So with mentioning all of that, what do you say we go ahead and we do? I don't know why I was acting like I was running right there in slow motion when I'm supposed to be diving head first into this video. Shout out to everybody who rocked with the dive scene. That was a little throwback right there. We haven't done that in a long time, folks. Let's go ahead and read the headline of this story, Embrace Yourself for the Crazy. Woman arrested for adding her inmate boyfriend to payroll at Long John Silver's. What? Folks, when I see this headline right here, the first thought that comes to my mind is, I can't remember the last time that I ever ate at Long John Silver's. Do you guys got a Long John Silver's anywhere where you're at? Do you eat that place? Is it even any good still? Now, before diving all up into this story, it really makes you wonder, like, why would this woman add her inmate boyfriend to the payroll at Long John Silver's? Well, let's go ahead and break this thing down. Folks, can you imagine how the phone call had to go between him and her, him being locked up, her being out here in the world, probably obviously working at Long John Silver, him asking her for some money, her telling him, hey, look, I thought I told you I work at a fast food restaurant. I can't afford to send you no money. And possibly and probably him concocting this mastermind scheme for him to be able to go to commissary and order him some Zoom Zooms and Wham Whams. Hey girl, hey, I'm so glad that you picked up. I'm so glad that I caught you between that double that I know you working today. Hey, what's on the menu today? Same thing as every day, it is a fast food restaurant. Hey look, I know you said you couldn't afford to send me no money, but girl, I got an idea. Why don't you get me a job there? I know I'm locked up. Ain't you picking up what I'm putting down? Get me a job. And then I ain't gotta ask you for no more money. Matter of fact, I could be collecting a check and we can spend this entire 15 minute phone call talking about our future instead of me trying to figure out if you can or if you will miss that card note in an effort to send me a few dollars. Yo, dude had to come correct with the talk game to be able to convince this woman to do this. But we don't know that for sure. That's just some speculation. Maybe she was the one that came up with this idea. Let's go ahead and read this story and try to figure out what, if anything, we'll learn about just that. A woman was arrested after police said she added her inmate boyfriend to the payroll at Long John Silver's where she worked. Police said a Pennsylvania woman who managed multiple Long John Silver locations put her boyfriend on payroll while he was in prison. Folks, this chick wasn't just the cashier or the store manager. She was the damn regional. Whatever led to this guy meeting this chick, maybe he knew her before he went to prison or maybe he met her through a friend. Hey, your girl got a friend that I could write to or possibly call? Or maybe he met her on a prisoner pen pal website. We don't honestly know. But whatever the case, this guy most certainly struck gold with this situation right here. Who says 
that it's hard for a guy to get a job after prison. This dude got him a minimum wage paying job while he was still locked up. He wasn't worried about working in the kitchen making no 27 cents an hour. This dude was getting him a fat old 550 while he was still locked up. Love will make you do some crazy things, I guess, said the detective Max Whitlinger. I'd say so. Not only did this chick risk her freedom and some charges, yo, this is probably a Fed case right here. I don't necessarily know if it is or it's not, but this is definitely embezzlement, fraud, at the very least. Michelle whew, Kerwin Kerzin Kerzuinski. Kurzuwinski, that's how you pronounce it. Michelle Kurzuwinski, 48 years old, was arrested after police received a tip from Long John Silvers. Damn, the restaurant told on her, or maybe somebody who was working there. Hey, yo, who is this dude, little dookie stain, that keeps getting scheduled to work with me? I ain't never seen this dude a day in his life. He probably wasn't just working at one of the Long Johns. He was probably working at every single one that she was managing. The restaurant chain discovered a man had been added to the payroll despite never working there. I wonder if he could come home from prison and get a job there. I wonder if in, if in any way this would, like, hold him up. You know, there's a lot of places that you can't apply for if you've got felonies on your record. And I don't think that Long John Silvers would be one of those places. But could you imagine this guy going and trying to fill out an application and them being like, little dookie thing? Wait a minute. Ain't you the dude that worked here but never really worked here and you was working at all three locations? Ain't your girl doing like a 10-piece nugget behind you? Better carry your ass down the street to Wendy's. Ain't getting no job up in here. Police says Kurzuwinski used her position to steal more than $50,000. I wonder how much a person makes in a year working at a fast food restaurant. I would probably say, and it's sad to say this, that they probably make less than $20,000 a year. This dude was damn near eligible for some sort of a pension. He was getting a salary. This dude made more money from this little scheme than most people is making with good jobs per year. $50,000 though? That's a whole hell of a lot of ramen noodle soup right there. Police says Kurzawinski used her position to steal more than $50,000 that ended up going to her boyfriend while he was behind bars. This dude struck gold. This dude was back in 1949 during the gold rush. Guaranteed living like an absolute boss behind bars. I wonder if it's going to say for how long she sent him this money. I wonder if it's going to, because this had to be over the course of at least a couple of years. Matter of fact, let's do a little bit of math. Let's say $100 a week times four weeks in a month. That's $400 times 12 months in the year. Folks, that is only $4,800. I mean, that's still a lot of damn money for somebody to be sending to somebody while they locked up for commissary. $100 a week times a full year is only $4,800. So... So let's just go ahead and break this thing down in that same way with the $50,000. $50,000 divided by 12. 12 months in a year. Holy shit! Folks, that comes out to $4,100 and $66 and 66 cents a month. She was probably sending this dude a stack a week. Forget just going to commissary. This dude had every pair of Nikes, every pair of New Balance, every pair of Timberland boots, every sweatsuit, JP4 player maxed out on the music. If you get in $1,000 a week while you in prison, there's people out here who ain't even making $1,000 a week in the real world. This dude didn't just have him a scam or a hustle or a gold mine of a girlfriend while he was behind bars. This man had a freaking career. She was in a position where she could hire and fire employees for Long John Silver, said the detective. She was in charge of about 10 stores. Damn, I said three earlier. She probably had this dude on the payroll of all 10 stores. She met this guy in state prison and decided she was going to put him on as an employee. Well, that answers one thing for us. It says that she met this guy while. Did they use the word while? No, they didn't. They used the word in. She met this guy in. In is the same thing as using the word while because it certainly sounds like she met this guy as he was serving his time. Maybe even going so far as to mean that she didn't know this guy prior. So not only was she getting to know somebody while they were locked up and he was telling her all the right things, this guy was getting to learn all about her. Oh, damn. You work at Long John Silver's? 
Oh, but you the regional manager of 10 stores? Have I told you that I love you? I mean, I know I just started talking to you seven minutes ago, but I think you might just be my soulmate. I can feel it. Do you feel that? Do you feel that? No, not fear, not fear at all. I feel absolute passion. Guy was probably reading this chick a Fifty Shades of Grey novel every 15 minute opportunity he got to speak with her on the phone. And guaranteeing his phone money was full up too. She was collecting a paycheck and she was forwarding him the money to different places for him, he continued. Yeah, JPay, uh, to the phone, uh, to that commissary fund, to his prisoner savings account. Authorities eventually tracked down her boyfriend who is out on parole in Philadelphia. He will be brought back to Butler County to face charges. Damn! He was released after this too. Can you imagine if a scam or a scheme or some fraud or some embezzlement type of shit that you was doing while you was locked up and you never got caught for it while you were locked up, but then you end up getting released from prison and you got to go back to prison for something that you did while you were in prison? That's crazy. Now, with mention of the fact of this guy getting released from prison, I ask all of you, do you think when he came home from prison, him and her were together? I would certainly hope so. It's really hard to find and put faith and stock into prison romance, meeting somebody while they're locked up. You know, can it be true love? Can it be for real? And there are some cases where it is for real. There's people who rock with after prison show, men and women who have significant others who are locked up and they are down for, I mean, they down. They down for their person who was locked up. They are riding. They are true. You know, we do a lot of laughing and joking about Jody and Jody number 10 say something again. And we do a lot of laughing and joking about the cons and the gimmicks and things that a lot of prisoners do while they're locked up. But that's not in all cases. It's only in like most cases. So with mention of all of that, do you think when this dude got home, he was true to old Kerwinsky Minsky? Do you think he was true to her? Hey, uh, whew. girl, we had a long ride. You rode with me for this entire 12 month period. You sent me over $50,000. Oh, I'm never gonna forget that. What do you mean, why am I saying I'm never gonna forget it? Girl, I get released tomorrow and I gotta let you know something. I gotta let you know, look, it don't feel right no more. It don't feel right in my heart. I don't wanna hurt you and I don't wanna lead you on. I know you sent me $50,000. I told you, I'm never gonna forget that. This chick's going to prison for all of this. There's no doubt about that. Maybe she don't. Maybe she just ends up with probation. But we're talking about a decent amount of money right here. We're talking about a half a chicken. I'm calling $100,000 a chicken. I think a chicken is really slang for like a kilo. Meanwhile, police in the neighboring county are investigating Kurzuinski for similar crimes. I guess maybe they're talking about crimes in relation to this case. Or maybe there were others that she did this for. You know, how did she justify this being the right thing to do? How did she justify this being something that she wasn't going to get in trouble for? Maybe she wasn't even thinking about that. Because maybe this guy was telling her all the right things. He had to be. You ain't never going to get in trouble for this girl. They ain't never going to catch us. We too smart. We too smart. We never going to get in trouble. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I've cracked a lot of jokes about this story right here, but... I want to say this, I genuinely do feel bad for the female involved in this, even though she did commit absolute crimes, embezzlement, fraud for certain. You get involved with some prisoners, not all prisoners, but some certain prisoners. These dudes got all the right things to say. They got all the right things to do to make a person feel special from the cards and the, and the, and the little arts and crafts that they could send home. And when a person is lonely out there in the real world, they are going to eat all that stuff up. And in some cases, they're going to be willing to do anything for that person that they think loves them and that they, in fact, do love. Is it love or is it just being absolutely crazy? Maybe that's something to take into consideration with all of this as well. But one thing about it, where there's a will, there's a way. And if it's going to lead to a payday, to some prisoners, it's going to be as easy as riding a bike or walking laying down the groundwork, the foundation that leads to that Christmas sack that they're able to go pick up on commissary day. It's sad to say that. I've been in that situation before. I've been around dudes who have done just that. When you're locked up, you need money. You want money. You want to be able to eat and live comfortably. 
And a lot of times you're not even thinking about the feelings of others. And also the lengths, the measurements that a person is willing to go to in an effort to help make your situation a lot better. And that's sad. That's sad. I don't know. I hope this chick gets probation for this. She did, you know, hit her with some restitution. She's got to pay that money back. Let her learn from this situation. And the dude, you know, does he deserve to go back to prison for this? I think so. You, you know, you commit a conspiracy to commit embezzlement. This is conspiracy to commit embezzlement, conspiracy to commit fraud. You know, you perpetrated a fraud. You orchestrated all of that as well. But with sharing this story with all of you guys, as always, I really want to hear what you guys think about this. I'm going to try not to make this video overtly long, so we'll wrap it up on that note. Let me know what you guys think about this, and as always, please leave a like and a comment letting me know just that. As always, until next time, enjoy life, the free world. Never take a moment for granted, and make the most of every day. Peace! Hey, uh, whew. girl, we had a long ride. You rode with me for this entire 12-month period. You sent me over $50,000. Oh, I'm never going to forget that. What do you mean? Why am I saying I'm never going to forget it? Girl, I get released tomorrow, and I got to let you know something. I got to let you know. Look, it don't feel right no more. It don't feel right in my heart. I don't want to hurt you, and I don't want to lead you on. I know you sent me $50,000. I told you I'm never going to forget that.